When the Lord created the earth, He filled it with millions of amazing plants and animals. Today, we call that biodiversity. Let's play a quick game to see how well you recognize some of God's most famous creations. Get ready to guess the animal as it's drawn onto the screen. We'll start with a fairly easy one. Can you tell what it is yet? That's right, if you guessed a toad or frog, you're off to a great start. Did you know, there are over 120 different types of animals mentioned in the Bible. Okay, let's see if you can guess this next animal. Here's a hint. This animal does not live in the water. Yes, it's a bird, but if you guessed bald eagle, you are really on your game. Did you know it was the Lord who shut the door of Noah's Ark? The Bible says so in Genesis, 7 and 16. Here goes the next animal. Let's see if you can guess what it is. Here's a hint. It is not a horse. That's right, it's a giraffe. Did you know Scripture refers to Jesus as the Lion of the tribe of Judah in Revelations 5 and 5. Alright, let's see the next illustration. Try to guess what kind of animal it is. That's right, it's a lion. So, you've really got the hang of it now. Let's keep going. See if you can guess the next animal that's drawn onto the screen. You've got it. It's a deer. Did you know that the sheep is the most frequently mentioned animal in the Bible. Well, this next animal is definitely not a sheep. If you guessed alligator or crocodile, you guessed right. Good job. All right, here's a hint for the next animal to be drawn on the screen. The name of this specific animal begins with C-H. It's not a monkey, it's a chimpanzee. If you guess chimpanzee, you are very, very good at this game. Did you know millions of trees are accidentally planted by squirrels who bury nuts? and then forget where they hid them. All right, here goes the last animal. Let's see if you can guess what it is. Got it, it's a butterfly. Did you know Jesus used fish to perform a miracle four times in his earthly ministry? Thanks for playing along, and remember the next time that you speak with God, be sure to thank him for Earth's biodiversity. Wait is over. Now comes the real fun. Hey friends, good morning. We are so glad that you
decided to join us today. Let's start our kid worship time with our call to worship song, Good Morning. This is a morning like no other. Cause it's a good, 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 good morning. It's a good, 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 good morning. A good, 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 good morning. It's gonna be a very good day. Cause you're a good, 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 good God. A good, 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 good God. A good, 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 good God. You are a very good God. Let us remember why we are here today. Why? We're here to sing. We haven't done it in a while. But Mrs. Navita Mason and her daughter, Kayla, are going to lead us in the song called Fix My Eyes. And you maybe even remember this song from the radio. I like that this song's message reminds us that when we look at things around us, our circumstances, things that are happening in our world, uh, we can feel discouraged or stressed out. But if we fix our eyes on Jesus, then he reminds us of who he is, that he is our hope and our light and our truth and our comfort and our peace. And that encourages us. So let's fix our eyes on Jesus. Fix my eyes on you.
fix my eyes on you. Okay, our next song you might remember from Backyard Club last summer or um, hearing or participating with us um, in one of the Sundays following Backyard Club where we did it on stage with the worship team behind us and it's called I'm Trusting You and I like how this song pairs with Fix My Eyes because when we fix our eyes on Jesus, we focus on Jesus, then it really encourages us to trust him because we remember, we remember all the things that he is and all that he's done and it makes it easier to trust him when our eyes are focused on him and we're not distracted with the things of this world. So no matter what's going on in your life, I really hope that you trust in Jesus. Let's sing I'm Trusting You. really do love and miss you and I cannot wait until we are together again worshiping Jesus on Sunday mornings. Until then, thank you for participating in this and just know that my heart is with yours. All right, bye friend. Good morning. Thanks for being here today for Children's Church. I'm so glad you're here and welcome to those who are new and I think my grandkids are watching today and welcome to you. Um, well, we're going to learn more about Jesus today. It's Sunday, and we learn things from the Bible, don't we? And so today, we're going to learn that Jesus always obeyed his Father. 
Isn't that amazing? Always. He always obeyed. And we're going to find out one of the very first things he did publicly. And it was very important. So two things. Yeah, we're going to learn two things today. We're going to learn about Jesus, how he had a message for people without using words. He was going to show them something really special. And so we're going to talk about that. You're going to see that in the, in the uh, video. And then we're going to learn about a guy named John the Baptist who shouted a message to the people to get them to turn and look at Jesus. Well, I have a cool guy that's going to come and talk to you today, maybe about an airplane, maybe a story. So you're going to want to hear that. You're going to want to listen. And it's going to teach us a, um, something about um, a message that you need to listen to. So he's going to come in a minute. But first, I just want to talk to you for a minute about sending a message without using words. So I'm going to show you a message and see if you can tell me what the message is without me telling you. Yep, it means I love you. I'm sending you some love. It's a heart. And so that I can do that and you'll know that I'm saying I love you. How about this? Yep, that's a message that says that's good or okay or I agree. And so, yeah, it's a message without using words. And one more might be like a salute. So our daughter, when we would tell her to go and clean her room, she used to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it meant, yep, I'll go get it done. And so it was a message without using words. Well, you're going to watch the video later and you're going to see what message there was that Jesus um, was displaying for us and that he wasn't even using words, but it was the most important message in the world. And now, here's our special guest. Well, hi buddies, boys and girls, Captain Paul here. And um, I love big airplanes. Here's one of the big airplanes I used to fly. It's called an A319 Airbus. And it hauled lots of people. And would you believe it? Airplanes talk to their pilots and they tell them certain things. And one of the things they tell has to do with safety. And they would tell you when there was another airplane nearby so you wouldn't accidentally run into each other. And it would go like this. At first it would say traffic. And that would let you know that there's an airplane nearby, but it's not a problem. But then if the airplane got closer, it would start to go, traffic, traffic. And that, as the voice got louder, um, it would begin to say, hey, it's closer and closer. And then before long, it would start to shout at you. And it would say, it would say traffic. And then it might say, um, climb, climb now, or descend, to descend now. It, it would tell you to go up or down or turn to avoid from having an accident. You see, it was shouting to warn us about possible danger. John the Baptist did just that. And as you see in the video here in a moment, and as Miss Rana comes back and talks to you in a moment, you're going to hear how it's important that we listen to people when they warn us with their mouth and with their words, because often they're trying to turn us to Jesus. John the Baptist lived in the wilderness. His clothes were made out of camel's hair and he wore a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. John began telling people, repent and be baptized because God's kingdom is almost here. Some people asked John, who are you? John said, I am not the Messiah. John also said he wasn't Elijah and he wasn't the prophet that God had promised to send after Moses. Who are you then? They asked. Long before John was born, the prophet Isaiah said, someone is shouting in the wilderness. He says, prepare the way for the Lord, make his paths straight. Isaiah was talking about John. John had a very important job. He was supposed to get people ready for Jesus, God's promised Messiah. 
people started to repent. They turned away from their sins and turned to God for forgiveness. Then John baptized them in the Jordan River. Baptism was a picture that the people's sins had been washed away. John preached, someone greater than me is coming. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. By this time, Jesus was an adult. He went to see John the Baptist at the Jordan River. When John saw Jesus, he said, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus told John that he wanted to be baptized, but John didn't think he should baptize Jesus. I need you to baptize me, John said. Why do you want me to baptize you? John was confused. He baptized people who confessed their sins. Jesus never sinned. Jesus said, allow me to be baptized. God says this is right. So John agreed and he baptized Jesus. Jesus immediately came up out of the water. Suddenly the heavens opened and Jesus saw the Holy Spirit coming down on him like a dove. God's voice came from heaven. This is my son, the voice said. I love him and I am very pleased with him. Jesus never sinned, but he obeyed God and was baptized like sinners are baptized. Baptism reminds us of Jesus' death and resurrection. It reminds us that when we trust in Jesus, we turn from sin and start a new life, a life lived for Jesus. Hello again. Uh, thanks for watching the video. And uh, many people, it says in Mark chapter 1, Many people from all the country of Judea and from Jerusalem were coming out to him and listening to him shouting this warning. They were coming out and they were uh, getting baptized by John in the River Jordan, uh, confessing their sins and realizing that they were sinners in need of a Savior. And then one day, one day it tells us in John chapter 1 that someone did come and um, it was Jesus and he came to the River Jordan, and John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And it was um, a great day. It was the day they were waiting for. And we find that Jesus um, was baptized in obedience to his Father. And he was showing us a picture of what he was going to do to take away the sins of the world. He was going to die on the cross and pay the penalty for all of our sin, and he was going to rise again to give new life and to um, set us free from um, sin to be able to walk in the way that God made us and the way he wants us to walk. And so what is our question for the, for the month? Our question is, why did Jesus become human? And the answer is, Jesus became human to obey his Father's plan and rescue sinners. See, Jesus was showing us with a picture, without words, right at the beginning of his ministry. This was the first thing he did publicly, that he was going to die and he was going to rise again. And it was the picture that he painted in being baptized. And so... Baptism is sending a message without using words. And we, as Christians, once we accept Jesus into our heart, then we find in the Bible that people who did that afterwards were baptized. Now, some of you have been baptized, and I've been there, and it's such a happy day when you and your dad and a pastor uh, get into that big tub of water and we don't have a River Jordan in our church, so we use a big um, big baptismal, and um, it's filled with water, and you get in there, and the pastor says, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you, and you go down into the water, saying, I believe in Jesus' death on the cross for me, and you come back up, and everybody claps, and your hair's all wet, and you're just so happy that you have new life in Jesus. And you're saying that with a picture on the outside that tells what's happened on the inside of you when you accepted Jesus to come into your life. Well, 
with the day that Jesus was baptized, just like your family came on the day that you were baptized, some of you, while Jesus' family came to you, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all showed up on that day, um, just revealing themselves as the heavens were torn open and the people were amazed. And the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove and rested on Jesus. And then there was a voice that came loud and clear that said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Oh, wow. It was such a happy day. And so I want to um, invite you to several things. One, if you haven't asked Jesus to be your Savior, the whole reason why Jesus came to rescue us sinners, you can ask him to be your Savior today by saying, God, I am a sinner and I want my heart washed clean of sin and I want um, Jesus to pay for my sins and then I want to walk in a new life. I want to be um, uh, cleansed by Jesus' death and I want to have the power of Jesus' resurrection life in me. And you can just um, pray that prayer with your mom and dad very easily. And so then that's when you become a Christian. And those of you maybe who are already Christians but have never been baptized, maybe you would like to paint that picture for your family and just bring that joy to all the people around that you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins and that he rose again to give you new life. Wow, that would be special. That's something you would need to talk with your mom and dad about and then they would come and talk to a pastor about that. Maybe you would like to do that. And so let me close in prayer. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for thinking about these things. And um, we want to just listen to John the Baptist and, and um, heed his warning to, to turn from our sin and look to Jesus to be the one who saves us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his death that paid for our sins and for his resurrection that gives us power to live a new kind of life. We love you and um, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. Hi, Flag Bible Kids. It's Miss Beth, and I am so excited we were able to get together again today. And wow, it has been an amazing few weeks. We have learned so much more about Jesus. So first we talked about Jesus's birth and we learned more about his birth. Then we talked about Jesus being dedicated as a baby. Last week, we talked about Jesus as a young child. And this week we talked about Jesus being baptized. But the incredible thing about the story this week is Jesus never sinned, but he obeyed God and was baptized just like sinners are baptized. So baptism is a reminder to us of Jesus's death and resurrection. Remember that Jesus died on the cross for our sin, each and every one of us for our sins. And then he rose again three days later. Baptism reminds us of Jesus and what he did to save all of us from our sin. When we trust in him, we turn from our sin and we start a new life a life that's with Jesus forever. Isn't it incredible? Jesus loves us so much. He loves each and every one of us and he wants us to be part of his family with him. So the last few weeks, we were talking about a, a big picture question. That question was, is Jesus God or is Jesus human? So look around, whoever's in the room, tell them the answer. That's right, guys. As son of God, Jesus is both fully God and fully human. And we learned lots about how he's fully God and fully human. So this week we started a new unit. So when we started this new unit, we have a new question that we're going to be learning more about over the next few weeks. So that question is, why did Jesus become human? So I want you to look around, whoever's in the room with you, tell them that answer. You guys are so smart, good job. Jesus became human to obey his father's plan, to rescue sinners. So he did it to rescue me, he did it to rescue you. Each and every one of us, 
He did it to rescue us from our sin. Isn't that amazing? He loves us so much. So I want you guys to remember that big picture question. And we're going to be learning more and more about that the next few weeks. So today I have a craft for us to remember the story that we just learned about. So the first craft that I have has to do with Jesus being baptized. So what I did is on two popsicle sticks, I drew two guys and then on a cup, we drew some water and I put a hole in the bottom. So then you can act out the story of how Jesus was baptized. So you can pull them in to be baptized. And when you're um, doing this, you can tell your parents the story, retell it. So another way you can do this, if you don't have a cup that you can color on, is you can take a piece of paper and you can fold it over. And we like we colored it so it looks like water. And then you can put the stick figures in there. And if you don't have a stick, you can just draw a person on paper and you can use them. So you can put the people in there and you can, act, you can put Jesus in there and act out the baptism again. So on this one, I wrote on it. I wrote John the Baptist baptized Jesus. So we have John the Baptist and Jesus so that you guys can act it out and tell your family the story and you can tell them why baptism is so important. So then the final craft that I did is I made a dove. So for this one, I did the shape of a dove and I cut it out, put an eye on there for it, and then I cut a slit right here and I took another piece of paper and I folded it accordion style. So I did one way and then did it the other way. And then I put it in here to make it look like the wings of the dove. So I did the dove because we heard about a dove that when Jesus was baptized, a dove came down. Such an incredible story. And this is a huge reminder for us of Jesus's love for us. So I also want to encourage you guys to continue your journaling um, I would love to hear about your journaling too. So if you guys have been journaling, I'd love to hear either what you've been drawing in it or what God has been teaching you. Remember that it is so exciting to go back and look in those journals and see how God has answered prayers or see what God is teaching you. So now I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to be done. Dear Jesus, just thank you so much um, for loving us. Um, thank you for... Um, coming down and being human, Lord, and for dying on the cross for us, for raising again. Lord, thank you for doing that so that you can take away our sin, Lord. Um, I just thank you for um, how much you love us. I thank you for um, what you've been teaching us about you the last few weeks in our classes, Lord. Um, I thank you for each of the kids that are listening to this. And Lord, if any of them have questions, I just, I hope that they can go and um, ask either Pastor Joel, Pastor Paul, me, their parents, um, someone, Lord, ask them how they can too be in your family, Lord. Um, I just thank you for loving us, for always being with us, and in your name, amen. All right, Flag Bible Kids, I miss each and every one of you. I cannot wait to see you guys again, and I hope that all of you have an amazing week, so I will see you next week. Bye!